All right, let's talk about something we all have a love-hate relationship with, mostly hate, email. Today, we're going to dig into this really interesting idea. What if Google's new AI features for Gmail aren't just about tidying up your inbox, but are actually the beginning of the end for email as we know it? So let me just start by asking you a very simple, very honest question. Do you actually like using email? Yeah, I didn't think so. It's kind of a rhetorical, right? Because we all know the universal truth, especially after a long weekend away from the computer. Absolutely no one likes email. It feels like a chore, a burden. It's just a huge problem. And just how huge are we talking? Well, there are over 3 billion Gmail users out there. That is a staggering number of people who share this exact same daily headache. You know, when your company's most popular product is also one of its most hated, that's, that's a real problem. This is what some are calling the universal email problem. You know that feeling, right? You open your laptop on a Monday morning and your inbox just slams into you like a fist to the face. It's just this overwhelming mess of clutter. And it's a problem Google is finally trying to solve with its most powerful tool. Let's just quickly break down why it's such a big deal. First, we spend literal days, I mean full 24-hour days every single year just wrestling with our inboxes. Second, it's just packed with noise that completely drowns out the stuff that actually matters. And for Google, this creates what's known as a negative halo effect. Basically, if you hate using their product every day, some of that frustration starts to rub off on how you feel about the company itself. So, what's the big plan? Well, Google is unleashing its powerful Gemini AI on the problem. And they're not just making small adjustments here. They're rolling out a totally new concept they call the AI Inbox. So what is this AI inbox thing exactly? Well, the best way to think about it, based on how Google themselves are describing it, is like having your own personalized daily briefing. It's designed to automatically sift through all the junk and just tell you what you actually need to pay attention to. And this slide really nails the difference. Your old inbox, it's just a messy, chronological fire hose of information that you have to sort through. The new AI inbox, on the other hand, flips that entire script. It prioritizes for you, it creates your to-do list, and it brings the important stuff directly to your attention. Now, before you start to panic, Google isn't just deleting your good old-fashioned inbox. This new AI view is going to show up as a separate section right on top of the old one. So you can always dive back into the chaos if you really want to. But okay, this is where the idea gets so much bigger. The AI inbox isn't just a smarter way to filter your mail. This is what some are calling step one in a grand plan to fundamentally change what email is even for. And this quote right here is the heart of it. For decades, your inbox has basically been a to-do list that other people get to write for you. The big vision here is to transform it into an actual to-do list that your own personal AI creates and manages for you. This lays out the evolution perfectly, doesn't it? We went from a simple, messy list of messages to this disorganized task list that we have to manage ourselves, all leading to a future where an AI assistant just tells us, hey, here are the things that actually need to get done. But it doesn't even stop there. I mean, once the AI is creating your to-do list, what's the next logical step? Well, it's for the AI to start doing the tasks on that list, pushing us into an even more automated future. And that next step is something called AI agents. Just think of these as bots that won't just tell you what to do, they'll start doing it for you. Responding to routine messages, scheduling your meetings, handling all that back and forth. Which leads us to this kind of sci-fi, but also increasingly plausible future. Instead of you emailing me, your AI agent will just email my AI agent and they'll figure it out between themselves. We humans only get looped in when it's absolutely necessary. So does this mean email is just gone? Probably not. The thinking is that it'll become what's been called the cockroach of the internet. You know, the unkillable, super resilient thing that's always there as a fallback when all the newer, fancier systems fail. So actually going into your inbox and dealing with it directly will become a really rare thing. It'll be kind of like a pilot disengaging the autopilot to fly the plane by hand. Something you only do in very specific, unusual situations. Because the automated system handles it perfectly 99% of the time. And now we get to the final and maybe the most fascinating twist in this whole story. What if, what if destroying email's role as a daily chore could actually have a really positive and very human side effect? Well, there are two ways you can look at this future. There's the dystopian view, right? Where we're just taking real human expression and boiling it down into sterile AI-generated bullet points. But then there's the utopian view. 
And this one suggests that as AI takes over all the robotic, boring communication, the value of something that is authentically human-made, well, that value is going to skyrocket. I mean, think about it. If almost all communication is automated, getting a thoughtful handwritten note or a beautifully crafted letter, suddenly that becomes incredibly special. It might even trigger a comeback, a renaissance for real human writing. You could even see new jobs or a new economy emerge around. And that leaves us with this final, really provocative question to chew on. Could it be that by killing the daily grind of email, we might actually restore the value and the art of real writing to humanity? It's a pretty wild thought, isn't it?